well, at least uh, this is how my speech would have sounded like if you're watching it on Facebook. Um, that's why my voice wasn't coming out. Um, my name is Ryan. I'm the agency head for Google, and I'm going to start by showing you my favorite ad uh, since I was a child, and uh, go lead you to the point to try to understand where we are today. Can we play the video, please? Sound? Again, this is how you watch an ad on Facebook. Okay, let's start over. That's the, that's the beauty thing about technology, it's, it doesn't work. Uh, okay, never mind, it's okay, forget about it. So, my favorite ad is a, is a anyone, how many Lebanese do we have in the room? <laughs> Surprising. Uh, so, my favorite ad is called Yes, 3-in-1, which is an ad shot in the 90s, and you could see from the production values that it's, it's pretty terrible. And we, we say that, you know, today consumers don't have time at all. In fact, not really. Consumers have a lot more time today because before they were consuming 12 hours of TV. Now they're consuming 12 hours of TV plus 12 hours of mobile at the same time. So they're actually consuming 24 hours of media in 12 hours. So the truth is consumers today have a lot more time. And back when I started, you know, when I was in university, in Saudi Arabia, there was a four-hour ad break for, all, for a whole day of programming. And during this four-hour ad break, the rating would be the highest, which means people were enjoying the ad breaks the most. Heaven for a CMO, right? I w don't you wish it was still that simple? And then we came along, the planners and the media agencies, and, you know, it was pretty simple. The media plan looked exactly the same every single month. I used to copy and paste media plans across different clients, different categories. It was, you know, it was very easy. It was beautiful. But then technology came along and did this to us. I'm sure you've seen this a thousand times. Okay, but this is the Lumascape. This is supposedly how the infrastructure of digital is today. So how the heck uh, am I as a CMO or as a marketing uh, employee supposed to understand all this technology and make it work, right? It becomes very, very challenging. Just by show of hands, how many marketeers do we have in the room? Okay, how many agency media and creative? Perfect, this is the first time I have you all in the room and no one's actually saying anything. It's pretty good. So I got really bad news for the CMOs, okay? And I've got really bad news for the agencies at the same time, and I got really bad news for us as Google and Facebook. According to the IDC and Forbes Global, 25% of the CMOs will be replaced every year from now to 2018, which means if you're working with a client today, most likely he won't be your client in the next uh, three years, okay? And why is that? It's really five concepts that we're not, we're not able to process today and, and we're not really adop adopting to. I'm going to build on everything that was said before, but I'm going to make it a bit more simple. There's an emergence of a chief marketing and technology officer. And whether, whether this is a hybrid of a chief marketing officer and a chief technology officer, it's going to come. Okay? And his role is going to be pretty simple. Understand the data, wherever the data comes from. So right now, the technology to do this is available. And I'll tell you what this is. Today, you go to the bathroom. The bathroom is able to analyze your urine test and able to tell you that your diet needs to change and able to send your uh, uh, fridge recommendations on what you should buy to fill your fridge. And you will basically touch the fridge and agree what you want to order, and it's going to be delivered straight to your home. No phone calls, no interaction, nothing whatsoever. This technology is available today, but it's not public yet because the public can't use it. Okay? So if you don't have a CTO that understands how this data will plug into your uh, marketing plan, then you can see the whole value change have changed, uh, have the chain have changed, basically. And I'm not going to go as far as that, because you might tell me I'm exaggerating. I'll go to today, what we do, right? We have Android power cars coming pretty, pretty soon. What do you think Dubai police will do about Android powered cars? That means at any point in time, you violate uh, traffic speed, any time, any point in time you park in an illegal zone, we'll be able to tell without having a officer on the street, right? The data is there. You're emitting data in everything that you do in every single second. You need the CTO to understand this and build the technology to do it. Again, I'm going to make it even more today. So what are you supposed to do, right? Very simple. Hire a CTO. 
He's going to cost you a lot of money in day one, but in four years down the line, you're going to remain relevant as a CMO. You can't hire a CTO, get close to technology. Get the, your house in order today. I can't tell you how many times we've walked into agencies or clients, or even internally, okay, and we've seen that the data is not in a readable format. It's not in a way that I can actually make any sense or decision out of it. So forget about self-driving cars and forget about, uh, you know, fridges that are going to order food for you. Start with the basics. Is my website data being collected? Am I sorting it in a way that I can use it? Am I, use it to re am I using it to retargeting? Am I using the most basic plays from, you know, tag management to tracking to, uh, to remarketing? It's, it's start, with, start there, because once you do this, once your infrastructure is there, any technology that comes will come on top. And I want to I wanna highlight something that Brené Brown said. Stories are data with a soul. You know, we talk about storytelling. You can't tell a story without data. So if you don't have the data today, the story you're telling might be very irrelevant. The, co the concept number two that's going to get the CMO fired is that there's no longer something called an advertising strategy based on flights, OK? We have to talk about real-time content distribution. Unfortunately, if I talk about today, 95% of the advertisers who use YouTube or Facebook place their TVC on YouTube or Facebook, okay? And that's, you know, that's, that's you're, you're, we're actually handing you, it's like somebody walking into your showroom, okay? And you show him the same car that's on the window. What's the point? They're actually walking in, they're asking to be engaged. So show, some, show them something different. Open the car, show them the inside, show them something that they can be engaged with. And I'll show you an example. It's one of the rare examples where YouTube was actually used to its benefit. Can we play the video? And hopefully this one will play. No. Video? I can play this one faster than you can get out of the video. You can hold it. You can hold it. You can hold it. Oh, it's still there. This one gives you the power that you need to use it. And you can hold it from the back. Come on, hold the zero. You're ready for the wait. Okay, so basically, if for those of you who uh, you know, don't speak Arabic, basically in the first five seconds, because you know you can skip the ad in five seconds on YouTube, in the first five seconds, this guy says, you bet I can actually open the trunk of the car before you skip this ad, okay? We've produced four or five of these. They cost below $20,000. So for the creative agencies in-house, next time you go to your client and you recommend a $1 million TVC shot in a remote location in South Africa, think twice. And we talk about always on content. There's no longer always on search. Consumers are expecting content every single day. Okay? So how are you going to be able to produce multiple TVCs throughout the year? You won't. That's why you have to start thinking about a content strategy. And the news flash is that big marketeers are, start are going to start to hire content creators in-house. If the agencies don't wake up and play this game, the, the big branders in the market will actually bring this talent in-house. And I see it as actually a hybrid talent eventually. Again, we used to think, when I was a planner, we used to think, you know what, I have three big bursts during the year, and I'm going to go all out, I'm going to spray and pray, and the media is going to be amazing. It's no longer the case, right? There are trends happening every day that brands are banking on, and hopefully more brands will bank on. Who remembers last year in the World Cup? First of all, how many Barcelona fans do we have in the room? Well done. So last year in the World Cup, uh, Luis Suarez bit Kellini. Remember that? Five minutes later, <laughs> this is making fun of both the gold line technology and the Suarez bite. This is basically, it's confirmed that it's a, So brands are actually acting at speed and following the smaller trends. And this is way more impactful than your TVC, or even running your TVC on YouTube or anywhere for that matter. Everyone remembers the launch of the iPhone 6, right? I'm a Googler, I'm supposed, not supposed to talk about this. But it, everybody knows, you know, it's an, amazing, it's an amazing brand. So if you're a Samsung brand manager, how do you react? Because this is going to be bigger than everything, and you know that. They're going to pump all their money into it, and they're going to push everything behind it. How do you overcome it? Can we play the video? Nobody wants to come out with sound today, I don't know why. Got it. It's okay. So, sorry, right, uh, just can you go to the middle of the video, please? 
Okay, that's it. Just pause. Okay, so basically you see these guys, they look like Apple employees, right? And what they picked is they picked every feature that Samsung beats the Apple with, beats the iPhone 6 with, okay? And they talked about it. And basically they showed how they, if their frustration eventually broke the phone. So they created content for YouTube, okay, uh, and for the platform, shot in 24 hours. 24 hours after the iPhone 6 launch, this came out, okay? Now, whether it's successful or not, that's besides the point. The point is that no TVC produced over a month and a half is gonna be able to counter this. Now, trend number three, innovation can come from anywhere, okay? And you have to keep the consumer at center. And here, I'll do a bit of self-promotion, shameless self-promotion. When, when you search for suicide on, uh, on, Facebook, on uh, Google Now in the US, what you get is this box with a helpline. Who do you think came up with this? Historically, you used to get this, right? Who do you think came up with this? Throw anything. Engineers, creative, no? Sorry? No. <laughs> it's actually an in-house doctor in the Google campus. His job was to actually deal with uh, Google employees if the, in case there are any medical conditions or medical issues. He came up and said, if people are looking for suicide, we need to find a way to help them. So the innovation on a Google product came from an in-house doctor, didn't come from the engineers or from the creative uh, in-house, okay? When we created the, uh, you know, the, the autofill when it comes to search, uh, and every year this feature is actually used, we save humanity 5,000 years. Imagine that, of time. Although, from a revenue perspective, this is really bad for us. The sales guys would come out and say, why would you do that, right? But this is, this is what's right for the consumer. And today we have marketeers who are afraid to let people play with the copy. You see it, we see it on YouTube. We, they actually ask us to put some videos down because some responded. Do you remember the Volvo ad with the Van Damme uh, a split on the trucks? There were about a thousand iteration of that. There was a Lego version. There, was, there were tons and tons of iteration because Volvo, which is not the most exciting brand, allowed people to play with their copy. Okay? And you need to be able to let go. So the more you relinquish control, the more you'll be in control. I won't talk about this because you'll get your ass kicked if you were one of those. Uh, I'm gonna sound like a broken record and say mobile first, okay? I really have no comment about mobile whatsoever. All I can tell you is, if I look at YouTube today, in, we have 530 million views per day, and I can't tell you the exact split, but a lot of it comes from mobile. In some markets, it exceeds 70%. So, uh, marketeers, stop complaining about the fact that you don't have mobile assets. No one cares. You don't have TV assets. When someone watches the ad on TV, okay, they don't go anywhere. So if people are consuming video on mobile, you better be there. And finally, measure, which is, uh, frankly, I mean, the state of measurement in MENA, I won't say too much about it, but it dates back to 1965. You know, you need to ask, Am I, are, my ad, are my ads being viewed anywhere, on any platform? You know, it's the most basic questions that you can, you can ask. How, how is it impacting my brand? Am I seeing any uplift? And eventually, when we get all the right measurements for all the branding, we're gonna be able to answer the holy grail question, which is, is media driving in-store sales? But before we have everyone in one room agreeing on one agenda, it's not gonna go there. For God's sake, the views today are counted differently. On Facebook, three seconds is a view. On YouTube, 30 seconds is a view. So if we, can, if we don't get consensus on a lot of the measurement activity, at least between the multiple platforms, it's not gonna get anywhere. This is not gonna happen. Thank you. <laughs>